the tenth week of the legislative session has come to an end, and uh, it seems like uh, with each passing day, with each passing week, uh, the budget crisis only gets bigger and bigger as we come closer and closer to the end of the legislative session. Um, we have we have we've been here now for ten weeks and have yet to see any significant revenue raising measures put on the floor, whether that's a cigarette tax, whether that's gross production taxes, whether that's any other significant revenue. Uh, to date, the House Republicans continue to promise that they understand the problem and they're trying to solve the problem, but they've done nothing to actually move forward in making progress to solving the budget woes that face the current state of Oklahoma. And then this week we find out that, in essence, public schools in Oklahoma have seen their fifth revenue failure in just the last year. Higher education, I believe, has seen about seven revenue failures in the last two years. Uh, yesterday, uh, the State Department of Education announced that they didn't have any money, enough money to meet the payroll demands of our public schools uh, around the state. That's frustrating to us because I'm confident um, that the State Department, as well as OMES, knew full well weeks ago that those budget cuts would be coming to our public schools, but they waited until the day before they were supposed to make payroll, the day before that check was supposed to have been sent to make that announcement, leaving school districts like mine in the Middell Public Schools about $1.8 million below uh, or in cuts from where they were just in January of this year. Uh, school districts taking another $17 million hit uh, when you've already got ballooning class sizes, you've already got programs that have been cut four day school weeks in about one fifth of our districts around, one fifth of our school districts around the state, um, showing an, an, an increasing need to find legitimate revenue to help our public school students, to help our hospitals, but yet the Republicans in charge have refused to do so. Uh, this week, uh, we, had, we had an opportunity to welcome um, a, a bluegrass band on the floor of the House of Representatives, and it was sort of ironic that literally they were fiddling while the state of Oklahoma burned. While they knew that they were looking at drastic budget cuts coming to public schools, schools who already cannot afford the cuts they've already taken, let alone another 17 million more, instead of putting budget proposals on the floor, we were playing banjos and watching them fiddle while the state and our public schools burned. It is um, frustrating. My caucus has basically had enough. We've had enough of, oh, well, there may be, we may put revenues on the floor. We heard last week that this week there may be a potential to have revenues brought before us and nothing. House Republicans offered nothing. Matter of fact, they didn't even reach out to us this week and offer up any new suggestions. Uh, from our understanding and in discussions with certain members of the House Republican Caucus, what's going on is they continue to float trial balloons as to, as to whether or not their caucus would support particular revenue measures. And it's apparently the case that each and every one continues to get shot down, not receiving enough support in their caucus to push it forward or at least to advance it to our caucus as a, as a potential negotiating point. I'm exasperated. My caucus has had enough of, of the games that are being played. It's time to put revenue on the table, and it's time to do it now. Our schools can't take it. Our hospitals can't take it. Our public, our public safety officers can't take it anymore. And, uh, and we demand that the speaker and the pro tem and the governor put together a real plan. We've offered up our Restoring Oklahoma plan, and we have received overwhelming bipartisan support from constituents around the state. If they would accept our $1.4 billion worth of revenue tomorrow, then we could balance a budget, have money for teacher pay raises, have money for state employee pay raises, and mitigate these costs. But here's what we're afraid is going to happen. We're afraid that in the next week or so that, that OMES is going to have to announce another revenue failure. And when he does that, it's going to be for one reason, actually two. One is they can't budget appropriately. They apparently can't do the basic math and figure out how much money they need to bring in in order to meet the current needs. But the second is this. To date, it's our, our estimation is that over $320 million have been, ro have been robbed from places like the Rainy Day Fund, most recently the County Improvement for Roads and Bridges Fund, the Unclaimed Property Fund, all to just meet the current month's needs. They're robbing money that, that, uh, that technically they shouldn't, they shouldn't be allowed to do, but they, they, have the, they have the right to access it. They've been robbing over $300 million worth of revenue that they've all got to replace. They've got to repay it. Um, and they're essentially kicking the can down the road, taking out another credit card, hoping that soon money will come in to be able to pay off the last three that they've taken out. But the reality is this, that money's not coming in. And so next month, or maybe in the next couple of weeks, we're, we are afraid that another revenue failure is going to be announced for the sole purpose that they're not going to be able to meet the needs of education, health care, and public safety, because they're going to need to take that money that they otherwise would give to those core functions and instead repay the money they've stolen from the County Improvement for Roads and Bridges Fund, the Rainy Day Fund, and the Unclaimed Property Fund. This is a horrible 
case of fiscal mismanagement by the Republican majority. There's no other way around it. They know the needs need, should be met. They know how to get it done. They know we've got to find revenues. And they refuse to do it because they'd rather play politics with their, with their primary voting base than stand up and, and, and look the Oklahoma voters in the eye and say their tax cuts, their gross production tax cuts, and their tax credits and giveaways to their corporate friends have bankrupted this state. Their political philosophy has bankrupted this state, and until they abandon it and join the, the, the rest of us who understand the political reality that we need new revenues, I'm afraid that we're going to be looking at more revenue failures for, for core services in the state of Oklahoma, and that should not, should not happen. Outside of that, um, one other issue that, that we wanted to bring up is um, the fact that last year, House Republicans put their arms around one another and sang kumbaya. They, they, they broke their, their shoulders trying to pat themselves on the back, saying that they finally cared about families who have children with autism. For years, my caucus stood up and tried to in, ensure that families who pay insurance premiums each and every month, it, when, when that moment comes and a doctor looks, their, looks him in the eye and says, Susie has autism or Johnny has autism, that they would then be able to say, but your insurance coverage provides benefits for you. Right? For years they fought that and said, no, we didn't want to do that. They, they sided with insurance companies over families. And then last year, last year finally, we had, we had a breakthrough. And House Republicans joined with us and said, you know what, House Democrats, you've been right all these years. We're finally going to mandate that, that insurance policies in the state of Oklahoma cover children with autism, like they do for women who need mammograms or, 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 or men with prostate cancer. That's what they said last year, and they took all the accolades for it. They, took, they got awards. They went around the state talking about how wonderful they were and what, what a godly heart they had looking out for families with children with autism. And then this year, this year, they returned to their original roots. They didn't really mean it. Families who have children with autism need to understand that because, because of Senate Bill 7, 4, 478 it, that passed out of committee this week, if that becomes law and that goes to the governor's desk, all that they did last year, for families with children with autism. All that we've done over the years for prostate cancer and, and mammograms, breast cancer, you go down the list, all of that will be erased in the effort, in, 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 the, uh, in the desire to appease large insurance, at large out-of-state insurance companies. And uh, so families need to be contacting their legislators this weekend and next week for two issues. They need to be supporting the Restoring Oklahoma plan to find real revenues to avoid any further budget cuts to education, health care, and public safety. And two, they need to call their representatives and tell them to oppose Senate Bill 478 because coverage for, for women with breast cancer and men with prostate cancer and children with autism should always come above the bottom line profits for insurance companies in the state of Oklahoma. We've said all along that our caucus would support, all 26 members of my caucus would support the cigarette tax if the Republican majority would, would acknowledge that it's not cigarette tax, uh, it's not cheap cigarettes that are the cause of the root problem in the state of Oklahoma. Public schools aren't, are, haven't been cut by $17 million today because cigarettes are too cheap. Public schools have been cut by $17 million today because Republicans would rather pass income tax cuts for their wealthy friends, gross production tax cuts for their wealthy donors, and, and corporate tax giveaways for their friends. Uh, that's why we're in this mess. And so if they were willing to address the root causes of this financial crisis, gross production tax, income tax cuts, or even Medicaid expansion or insure Oklahoma expansion, then our caucus would give all 26 of our votes to, to, to move the needle on cigarette taxes. And we, we know that $160 million worth of cigarette tax money will not solve a $900 million budget hole. And so we're trying to, to use our support for the cigarette tax as leverage to get them to support the gross production tax. And, at, and, and on that note, it should be noted that just a few minutes ago, uh, I, on behalf of my caucus, filed an amendment to Senate Bill 475. Uh, Senate Bill 475 is legislation that deals with the gross production tax. We filed an amendment that would take all new wells three years and younger and would take that gross production tax from 1% or 2% that they're paying now and move it immediately to 5%. Uh, that, that bill, when it comes up for, the, for a vote on the floor of the House of Representatives sometime next, sometime next week, will give the Republican majority an opportunity to put their money where their mouth is and stand with their constituents and say, let's find new revenues from gross production taxes, the $325 million that that would bring in, and use that to balance a budget. Or they can side with their big friends in the oil and gas companies and oppose that and instead look, the, look their public school children in the eye and say, you can take more cuts. And so Senate Bill 475 has my amendment on it to raise the gross production tax to 5%. And it it is our hope that, uh, that the, the public, the citizens of Oklahoma, will put pressure on the Republican majority to not table it, to actually hear the amendment, and then to support it so that we can move the ball down the, down the field when it comes to significant revenue raising measures. Many of our oil and gas companies uh, in the state of Oklahoma are drilling in, in North Dakota paying a 10 or 11 percent gross production tax, and they're doing it here paying a 2 percent. Make no mistake about it, unlike um, manufacturing or engineering, where you, where you could pick up your, um, your, your manufacturing company and move it to any state in the union, uh, 
you can't do that with oil and gas. They're going to drill where the oil is, and they've been doing it for, for centuries. And understand that um, the towers that have been built in downtown Oklahoma City and Tulsa uh, with the oil and gas money, they were built when those companies were paying 7 percent gross production taxes in Oklahoma and not 2 percent. And so they could do it. They made their, they made their fortunes on 7 percent. And you know who else made, made off well? Our public school children. And we can go back to that, or at least up to 5 percent. They can still make their billions, and our kids can benefit from it as well. Our estimation is that if you go from 2 to 5 percent, you would bring in about $325 million uh, in gross production tax revenue, which is a third of the way to closing the budget hole without hurting middle class families, without hurting the oil and gas industry, without costing the state any jobs. I appreciate uh, Pro Tim Schultz at least being honest, having a moment of, of honesty to say that the likelihood of a teacher pay raise is pretty small. My caucus has been saying that for, for, the, for all 10 weeks that we've been here because we understand the reality. The reality is we've got a $900 million budget hole and you've got a Republican majority and a governor who don't really want to find significant revenues uh, without hurting middle class families. And so until they change their position, there is zero chance that a teacher pay raise uh, will come to fruition this year.